Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the inland Northwest. It was one of America's exceptional hotels when it opened in 1914. One newspaper reporter called it a wonderland. Here, birds sang in the lobby, guests received only new or washed money in change, and chilled water flowed to each of 500 rooms. The Davenport Hotel is so much more than just a hotel. Everything people did in Spokane for most of the 20th century, they did at the Davenport. It was said that mail could be addressed simply to the Davenport Hotel from around the country or overseas, and it would arrive here in Spokane at the Davenport Hotel. Local historians and authors Tony and Suzanne Bomonti have written the definitive historical book on the Davenport Hotel and the people associated with it. They released the book at Auntie's Bookstore back in December, and it has quickly become one of the hottest sellers ever. Years in the making and deeply researched, the book presents the most complete history ever published of the Davenport Hotel. It was very special. There were so many people that we've ran into or heard about that, you know, they met their spouses here, they fell in love here, they, uh, they had their first dates here, they had their honeymoons here, things like that. So it's, it's the place, it was the place of Spokane, it was the crown jewel of Spokane. This is where you, you went if you wanted to really make a hit with your, your girlfriend or your wife or a, a business uh, a partner or, or you know, business acquaintance or whatever. So you went to the Davenport Hotel. I've questioned a lot of people, would they really have torn this building down? I mean, I just couldn't believe that it came that close, but I've been told with great assurance that it was very close to meeting with the wrecking ball. So we're very fortunate because they just couldn't replace this building. The Bamontes discovered several long-told stories about the hotel's namesake, Louis Davenport, weren't true. For example, it wasn't just happenstance that Louis came to Spokane in 1889, and the Davenport Hotel wasn't originally his. You'll have to read the book to learn more. So you're seeing the open anyway. A companion video to the Bamonte's book has also just been released. It begins with the Davenport Waltz, written for Mr. Davenport in 1909, and recently released on CD by local composer Don Carone. The video is the work of Peak Video Productions and the production team of Robin Briley and Jim Bolzer. Robin's father, veteran Spokane broadcast journalist Bob Briley, hosts the program and remembers the Davenport Hotel played a central role in the life of the city. I can remember when I was a kid, Lindbergh came to town. I was about uh, four years old, I think, and I can remember going to Feltz Field and sitting on my grandfather's shoulders, looking at this great big sea of people that surrounded the Spirit of St. Louis. And then uh, there was a big parade downtown, and Lindbergh was escorted to the Davenport Hotel where he stayed. And, um, there's, so many, there's so many things that... Uh, that I remember. The glory years of the Davenport Hotel, 1914 to 1945, are celebrated in an exhibit at the newly opened Museum of Arts and Culture. This is as close to checking in at the Davenport as one can get until the real thing opens again. And one of my best um, memories of this subject is virtually going into the bowels of the hotel with one of my associates from my office with hard hats and flashlights and going into rooms and shining those lights into areas that you know it's almost a sense of discovery you felt like you were you were the first one there in the room and, and that had been that nobody had inhabited this room for years and so in that process you we, we went across some just wonderful artifacts here for example are the plans of architects Cutter and Malmgren when the Davenport Hotel was literally still on the drawing board the dishes and silverware that served venison steak with currant jelly and brandy peaches for less than a dollar at Davenport's restaurant. And the postcards, mailed for a penny from Spokane, Washington, bearing the greetings of guests at the famous Davenport Hotel. The MAC expects to see 40,000 guests before this exhibit closes June 30th. 
That's the entire crowd of a Bloomsday through here in six months. The Davenport Hotel book, video, and CD are available at Auntie's Bookstore, Hastings Books, Music, and Video, Barnes & Noble Booksellers, and the Gift Shop at the Museum of Arts and Culture. KSPS Public Television is working on a Davenport Hotel project of its own to air in conjunction with the hotel's grand opening celebration this fall. Photographer Scott McKinnon, he's behind the camera, and I, have been collecting lots of pictures and stories to share with you when the Davenport Hotel is grand again. We've been following the restoration project closely since it began two years ago. The eastern third of the old hotel block, including the original restaurant, was in awful condition and so was torn down. A ballroom built above the restaurant at the turn of the previous century was saved intact and placed in the new east wing. The Davenport's new owners, Walt and Karen Worthy, were there to watch it happen, and this was actually Walt's idea. You can truly say we have angels over us now, huh? The Hall of the Doges now sits next to its younger sister, the Grand Pennington Ballroom. Only a few feet and a hundred years between them. The first two floors of the main hotel are almost finished. The lobby is very close to what it was when new, including four towering lamps, once feared lost forever, recast from a lone survivor. Everything above the second floor is new. New walls, new wiring, new plumbing. Only one guest room, the circus room, remains of the original 500. The new guest rooms, 281 in all, plus 27 suites, will look something like this. Everything here for the laptop and internet connection. It won't be much longer before one of America's exceptional hotels will be right here in Spokane again. Well, we're, we're hoping to be uh, one of America's exceptional, or the world, for that matter, exceptional hotels. And we, we think we're well positioned to do that with hotel in not only the downstairs part, the, the ballrooms and, uh, and lobby, but also on, on the guest rooms as well. So we think we're going to be right in there with the best in the world. The Davenport's original ballrooms are all now as new and have hosted special events since December, like this Christmas party for employees of MedStar Northwest who attended in period clothes from the Civic Theater. Soon again, as once upon a time, people will say, I'll meet you at the Davenport. I'm staying at the Davenport. Spokane, isn't that where you have the Davenport? You know, there is, there is a mystique about this hotel. People just fall under its spell. If you have a story idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS-TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.